video so today we will be talking about slice type so slice lets you uh, reference a contiguous sequence of elements in a collection rather than the whole collection a slice is a kind of a reference so it does not have ownership here is a small programming problem write a function that takes a string of words separated by space and returns the first word it finds in the string if the function doesn't find a space in the string the whole string must be one word so either so the entire string should be written let's work through how we would uh, write the signature of this function without using slices to understand the problem that slices will solve so fn first word is okay it takes an borrowed string the first word function has a uh, ampersand string as a parameter we don't want ownership so this is fine but what should we return we don't really have a way to talk about part of a string however we could return the index of the word indicated by space let's try that as shown in the listing 4-7 so we are returning the usage okay we are returning converting the string as bytes then iterating over that bytes and if item contains a space okay i think they are checking for each and every character then return the index if not then return the string length because we needed to go through the string element by element and check whether a value is a space we will convert our string to an array of bytes using the at the rate bytes method so this is this and next we iterate over the array of bytes using the iter method bytes dot iter dot enumerate uh, we'll discuss iterators in more details in chapter 13 for now note that iter is a method that returns each element in a collection and that enumerate wraps the result of a iter and returns each element as part of a tuple instead the first element of the tuple returned from enumerate is the index and second element is a reference to the element this is bit more convenient than calculating the index ourselves because the enumerate method returns a tuple we can use pattern to destructure that tuple we will be discussing patterns more in chapter 6 in the for loop we specify a pattern that has i for the index in the tuple and at the rate item for the single byte in the tuple because we get reference to the element from dot iter dot enumerate we use ampersand in the pattern okay inside the for loop we search for the byte that represents the space by using byte literal syntax if we find a space we return the position otherwise we return the length of the string by using h dot len we now have have a way to find out the index of the end of the first word in the string but there is a problem we are returning a u size on its own but it's only meaningful number in context of the ampersand string in other words because it is a separate value from the string there is no guarantee that uh, it will be valid in the future consider the program in listing 4-8 that uses the first word from the function uh, from listing 4-7 so we have created a string then i am passing it uh, as a borrowed string in first word then i am clearing the string okay word still has the value 5 here but there is no more string that we could meaningfully use with the value 5 word is now to totally invalid this program compiles without error and would also do so if we used word after calling h dot here because word isn't connected to the state of s at all word still contains the value 5 we could use that value 5 with the variable s to try to extract the first word out but this would be a bug because the contents of s have changed since we have saved phi in word having to worry about the index in word getting out of sync with the data in s is tedious and error prone managing this index is even more brittle if we write a second word function its signature would have to look like this now we are tracking a starting and an ending index and we have even more values that were calculated from the data in a particular state but aren't tied to the state at all we have three unrelated variables floating around that needs to be kept kept in sync luckily rust has a solution to this problem string slices so string si slice is a reference to part of a string and it looks like this ampersand s rather than a reference to the entire string hello is okay so 0 1 2 3 4 
is a reference to a portion of the string specified in the extra 0 to 5 bit we create slices using range within brackets by specifying starting index dot dot ending index the starting index is the first position in the slice and ending index is more one more than the last portion in the slice internally the slice data structure stores the starting position and length of the slice which corresponds to ending index minus starting index so in the case of let world equal to ampersand as 6 to level world would be a slice that contains a pointer to the byte at index 6 of s with length of value 5 okay let's check this out this for now I will comment out this I will comment out this okay so we are getting he hello it is a string literal or a string slice rather okay we create slice using a range within brackets by specifying start where starting index is the first position and ending index is one more than the last position in the slice okay so the last ending index would be ignored kind of uh, internally the slice data structure stores the starting position and length of the slice which corresponds to ending index minus starting index so in case of let world equal to world would be a slice that contains a pointer to the byte at index of index 6 of s with a length value of 5 with rush range syntax if you want to start an index 0 you can drop the value before the two periods in other words these are equal uh, okay with rush range syntax if you want to start an index at 0 you can drop the value before the two periods By the same token, if you if your slice includes the last part of the string, you can drop the trailing number. Okay, you can also drop both values to take uh, a slice of the entire string. So these are equal. String slice range indicates indices must occur at valid UTF-8 character boundaries. If you attempt to create a string slice in the middle of a multi-byte character your program will exit with an error for the purpose of introducing string slices we are assuming ASCII only in this section a more thorough discussion of UTF handling is in the storing UTF-8 encoded text with strings section of chapter 8 with all this information in mind let's write first word to return a slice the type that signifies a string slice is written as ampersand str okay we are converting it to bytes then we are looping it over we are checking if there is a space if whenever we find a space then we want okay part of the string got it we get the index for end of the word the same way as we did in listing 4-7 by looking for the first occurrence of space when we find a space we return a string slice using start of the string and index of the space as starting and ending index now when we call first word we get a sim single value that is tied to the underlying data the value is made up of a reference to the starting point of the slice and number of elements in the slice returning a slice would also work for a second word function we now have a straightforward api that's much harder to mess up because the compiler will ensure uh, the references into the string remain valid remember the bug in the program and listing 4-8 when we got the index to the end of the first word but then cleared the string so our index was invalid 
that code was logically incorrect but didn't show any immediate errors the problem would show up later if we kept trying to use the first word index with an emptied string slices make this bug impossible and let us know we have a problem with our code much sooner using the slice version of first word will throw a compile time error okay here's the compile error cannot borrow s as immutable because it is already borrowed because it is also borrowed as immutable i think then it should be and mute right recall from the borrowing rules that if you have immutable reference to something we cannot also take it as a mutable reference because clear needs to truncate the string it needs to get a mutable reference the print ln after the call to clear uses the reference in word so the immutable reference must still be active at that point Rush this allows the multiple reference in clear and immutable reference in word from existing at the same time and compilation phase not only has rust made our api easier to use but it has also eliminated an entire class of errors at compile time starting string literals as slices recall that we talked about string literals being stored inside the binary now that we know about slices we can properly understand string literals the type of s here is ampersand str it is a slice pointing to that specific point of the binary this is also why string literals are immutable ampersand str is an immutable reference string slices parameter knowing that you can take slices of literals and string values leads us to one more improvement on first word than that its signature a more experienced rush station would write the signature shown in listing 4-9 instead because it allows us to use the same function on both ampersand string values like borrowed string and slices values if we have a string slice we can pass that directly if we have a string we can pass a slice of the string or reference to the string this flexibility takes advantage of deref coercions a feature we will cover in implicit deref coercions with functions and methods so i guess if i had to convert this capital string with two string slice then i would just write you know something like this this is a good tip get str slice it should be like ampersand okay convert string to string slice also known as string literal other slices string slices as you might imagine are specific to string but there is more general slice type too okay for numbers you can do something like this the slice has the type ampersand i32 
it works the same way as string slices by storing a reference to the first element and a length you will use this kind of slice for all sorts of other collections we will discuss this collection in detail when we talk about vectors in chapter 8 the concept of ownership borrowing and slices ensure memory safety in rush programs at compile time the rush language gives you control over your memory usage in the same way as other system programming languages but having the owner of data automatically clean up that data when the owner goes out of scope means you don't have to write and debug extra code to get this control ownership affects how lots of other parts of rust work so we will talk about this concept further throughout the rest of the book let's move on to chapter 5 and look at grouping pieces of data together in a struct so yeah see you in the next one thank you